Hello guys, welcome to the Black Spin Global Podcast. I am Lucy. And I'm Eugene. And welcome to day three at Wimbledon. Crazy. <laughs> it feels like, I feel like I've been here for 20 days. Wow. <laughs> that, that means you'll be not enjoying it then. <laughs> no, because there's so much going on. Because oh, it's just okay. like up and down, yeah, up and down. Yeah. It's going, the days are extremely long. We're here early. We're leaving late. Although today I think we'll be able to leave it's gonna to be touch and go, but yeah. We'll let's see. see. Let's we'll see. see. Let's see how it goes. How did you? How did you feel about today? Yeah, today was a long day, Lucy. Today I, was actually I, tough I, to I was, wake up. I wore my jacket, so I was walking around Wimbledon in a winter jacket, <laughs> and it's the third of July, which is nuts. Crazy. But that is London summer for you. Crazy. Um, but yeah, good day. I say good day. A mixed day. To a be mixed fair. day. That's like, true. That's true. Actually. Obviously, we'll talk about all the matches, but. Yeah, some good wins, but also some like tough defeats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I think we should start with the wins today, and like yeah, go go in that order. Yeah, um, sure. Let's go, Coco Goff. Yep. So the second seed, world well, number two, uh, she beat Anka Tadoni six two six one on number one court, um, where the roof is closed for that one from yeah, start to finish. Yeah, the roof has been closed the whole day today. Because obviously, play was meant to start at eleven o'clock on the outside court. So I don't think play got underway until like one. One. Yeah, basically yeah, around the one. same time as like the the show court, which is mad. Was starting, yeah. Um, we got here early, as usual. Gosh, <laughs> that's more Lucy's doing than mine. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Coco Goff, she was very impressive. You watched most of that match. I did. And who yeah. who was sat in front of you? My cousins. <laughs> My cousins, guys, and for those who don't know, obviously, uh, you know, Roger Federer is deep down in, in my head. He's my uncle. You know, sometimes I call him dad, you know, just like that. You know, that's that, that, that's my G. And, you know, his his, his twins, his twin sons do, were there do, do with remember, his grandfather. Sorry to cut you, but do you remember when I tried to claim him as an African? Because his, his mum His South mom Africa. is half South African. Like, he tried it and I was like, okay, Eugene, I, like Fed I love Federer, but relax. Okay, relax. <laughs> that's it, go on, but, um, Yeah, so the twin sons were there um, with the dad, I mean, with Roger's dad and Roger's mum. Um, which is really cute. Mm. You will think that they will only come when their dad is around. So it looks like they actually wanted to watch some matches. And that was the only time I saw them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they're so adorable. They, they're polite, they're calm. You know, when I think there was a photographer, like actual, like the women of photographer that came to take a picture of them. And oh, yeah. they, it's, it's like they know how to act. Just like their dad. Pretty much, yeah. Just like their dad. So yeah, shout out to my cousins out there. Hope they're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but that Coco match, um, it was... It was really good. Um, I will say that I feel like she did play a lot better in her first match compared to this one. Um, you know, she the first set she was a, more in control. Um, she take, take, she did take like the first break. There was a couple of you know errors and stuff, especially with her serves. Um, and mean, meanwhile, like Tadoni, she just leveled up and she was aiming for some winners as well. I thought she 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 was a she's a big hitter. Like I was surprised yeah, at how she, big she yeah, is the ball. Yeah, same, same. And she was going for a lot of like yeah, she was going for a lot and rightly so. Yeah, um, she did. A hundred percent. But yeah, she um she still secured the first set with just just thir thirteen unforced errors, which to be fair is still good considering that at times with Coco could get a little bit higher. Um the first serves were decent, but I feel like this her second serves were way better. Um but yeah. And, if, and the, with the second set, she took the first break. Again, she was moving more towards the net as well. Um, but even that, that did not stop to, to Dhoni. She was still like hitting big. Um, there was one moment during the second set, actually. It was very funny. I don't know if you saw it when you were watching the screen or something. But um, I think like Tadoni was hitting big and Coco was trying to return it. And it literally like it went really high. Like as like, in... Like hitting the roof. So that's the thing. It didn't hit the roof. Okay. It went through the holes of like the roof. Oh, damn. And then as she landed in, which surprised, because we were all expecting it to go out. Yeah. So even like Coco was just chilling there. Tadoni was even like chilling. But then as she landed in, oh, wow. and they were hitting, I think like at least a couple of times, but then Tadoni, Tadoni then hit the net. But what I found funny is that when that happened, she then goes to the empire and was like, you know, trying to like, you know, yeah, yeah. or whatnot. And my head was thinking, girl, if that was, if you hit that winner, you wouldn't have <laughs> done that. But then I think I've, I then allowed her when one journalist actually asked me, 
I don't think she saw it like through or something. So she asked me like, did it bounce or did it hit? I was like, no, it literally went through. Oh, so I okay. even like tweeted it as well because I think some people, I think maybe Tadoni or others thought that it hit the roof or it bounced because yeah, yeah. then that could have possibly been a fault to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not on the court. It's not on the court. Yeah. The ball hit something but yeah. it literally, it, it didn't hit anything. It went literally True. through. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. But um, either that, um, you know, there was again more breaks again. I mean, sorry, yeah, more breaks from Coco. Um, but then Tazoni's errors as well started going high. Like as well, even though she was hitting big, those errors did cost her. But yeah, overall, Goff, I think she, you know, she, she, she's standing through. She was, she was trying her did best. She hit a lot of lobs as well, which I asked her about during the press conference. Um, I wish I worded my question a bit, a bit better. Uh, more of like. You know, she doesn't really hit lobs as much, but that match she was doing it. It's just nice seeing how she's grown yeah, into like, like her technique. Vary, varying her game. Yeah, so mm. her her technique before she wasn't hitting it as much, but that match she did it a lot and she did explain that, you know, that she had to when she played against someone like Tadoni. Um but one thing that did stand out was her serves, like I said earlier, to a point where um um our guy Tamani Carroll actually did ask her if he if she actually looks at um, her serve speed and checks it out often and um, she actually had a very interesting question so this is what she said yeah I do check the serve speed sometimes in the match because I try to make sure I go for it because sometimes unconsciously when you're tight maybe you try to just get the serve in so I'm, there are times where I'll check and if I miss if it's like even if I miss and the serve is like 119 or 118 and up I'm like okay that's good I hate to miss when it's like slower um and I too tried I want to get to 130 I think the the fastest I've gotten is 128 um do I have a 130 in me I don't know maybe if I was like a little bit taller I definitely can get 130 now if it goes in I I don't know (laughs) (laughs) so yeah that was Coco um she just like she said does she have 130 in her I I actually do think she can do 130. I feel like she can. She just doesn't realize Casual. that she actually can. Casual. Yeah, she she definitely can. She <laughs> she, yeah, she, get she was hitting like what 120s, 125. Yeah, she was like, very close. Yeah, she was literally like very very close. So yeah. Do, do, do you think just quickly? Do you think the score is like an accurate reflection of the match? Because like six two six one, that that seems quite straightforward. But I I don't because I don't think it was. It, As in, I think Tadoni actually played, especially that first set. 100%. I, think Tadoni played I agree with quite you. Well. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Um, especially, yeah, like you said, like that first set she did, like I said, the second set is because of her errors, but no, nah, it literally wasn't. The service game were very, were very long. Yeah, exactly. There were times exactly. where, you know, a lot of I juices. Thought, yeah, yeah. I, there was, she had a lot, Tadoni had like, a lot of opportunities to potentially break. So I but, think that's why maybe you should give Coco a bit more credit as well. There yeah, 100%. Because, yeah. Yeah, she's made that look. Well, the scoreline suggests it's a lot easier than it looks. So, mm-hmm. fair play for um, sure. But yeah, she she has the uh, the Brit Sine Cartel she next. Does. Um, and I want to say Cartel was a wild card. Um, um, well, no, no, wow, so. no, she came through qualifying. Yeah, she came through qualifying. So yeah. fair play. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she she beat Clara Burrell mm-hmm. in three sets earlier mm-hmm. today uh, to set up that third round with with Coco. Yeah. Um, what a moment that's going to be because I'm, I'm guessing that'll be on possibly centre or number one again. 100%. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big, big moment for Cart. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Cartel or Cartel? Cartel? Vibes Cartel. <laughs> 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 um, but no, we're fair play and well played to Coco. For sure. Uh, another win for another American now mm-hmm. on the men's side. Francis mm-hmm. TFO, big foe. Yeah, probably probably the match of, uh, match of the day. For me, definitely. Yeah, I think yeah. TFO looked very good against Borna Chorich. So that mm-hmm. was a seven six six one six three victory. Yep. Um, and that was on court eighteen, your favourite court. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I watched most of this match mm. partly from the screen and then most of it from like court side. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just was really impressive TFO man. Like obviously still rocking the the knee brace. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, moving so well. And I, I did tweet like during the match like just how how dominant he was like throughout um finding his spots of his serve like i said moving well as well and just like yeah dominating like from the back of the court yeah um really interesting watching chorich too because i've not actually seen chorich 
live before i've seen him on tv a, a lot yeah yeah i feel the same but it's me. just really interesting to like see his like um, mannerisms like before mm-hmm. he serves mm-hmm. like it's, he's got like obviously every player kind of has uh, kind of um i don't know a, a, a routine they kind of go through before before yeah. they serve yeah but like he puts his foot so close to the to the to the baseline yeah yeah i'm always like wondering like is someone gonna call a foot fault <laughs> it, it literally looks like sometimes his foot is like touching touching the base and obviously that's not allowed to happen but right right somehow he manages like not to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and like you can see like his calf muscles like twitching like because mm. there's so much tension mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like it's just it's just it was crazy to yeah, see that yeah um but yeah tfo played really really well um like the tie break was obviously close because it went to a, it, I mean the first set went to a tie break so obviously mm-hmm. the first set was close but he had opportunities to win that first set before it got to a tie break, tie break. but yeah in in the tie break obviously he got he got the job done and then mm-hmm. yeah carried on the momentum in that second set winning at 6-1 which again is pretty comprehensive mm-hmm. um and then the third set just carried on so it was a 6-3 set in the, in the end mm-hmm. um i really like the fact that now he has the opportunity to to play Carlos Alcaraz, which is like the popcorn match of, yep. of the third I, round. I, I literally I, I mentioned it on our Wimbledon did. preview you thing, did. and I was like, "Yep, this so, is the if he reached the third round." And what the, what's, what I love the most about that is that um, apparently on on court, um, Carlos was asked because apparently like um, after like Tiafo's match, he was saying like he was looking forward to you know who's feeling a little bit confident and cocky which I, I love I love that from Francis I love that from all players to be honest yeah, good, exactly. especially in tennis um, so yeah he said that you know he's coming after Carlos and they asked him what he has to say about that and Carlos said I'm coming for him Whew. guys fighting words guys, fight talk. guys guys hear me out right now wrap up whatever you have cancel your meetings call in sick <laughs> I don't know cancel your dates Tell your friends to not call you. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb because I'm telling you right now, yeah, that Carlos versus Tiafo match is going to be entertaining. I am here for it. One and head Wimbledon, head. if you want to do it right, that has to be sent to call. Oh, yeah, Put yeah. some respect on that. You'd, you'd, so, yeah. You'd, you'd think so. But yeah, it's one all in the head-to-head. Obviously, they haven't played each other since the US Open 2022. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that was a five-setter. Yep. And yeah, obviously, Tiafo spoke about that as well during his press conference. Mm-hmm. Um... Also, I didn't mention to you as well. Like, so when we walked into the to the room, it was one of the smaller rooms, so it wasn't recorded. Like, picked up by yeah. you know, the Wim- official Wimbledon like um, yeah. moderator and stuff. There were ESPN. I think I think it was ESPN cameras mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Like, as in, so he's being filmed for like I don't know if it's a documentary or what. Oh. Um, so, yeah, obviously TFO is back to TFO doing TFO things. The cameras are now all all over him again, mm-hmm. um, which is good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he's just such a vibrant like guy, charismatic. Yeah. Like that's why everyone loves him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I did ask him about because um, there was a rain delay as we spoke about initially when, when we started the pod. Mm-hmm. So he was first on um, court eighteen, but like like we said, that rain delay pushed play back for I want to say two hours. Yeah. So I just asked him basically like yeah, what did he do? Um, during that rain delay, and mm-hmm. he, here's what he said. I was actually happy it pushed back a little bit. I was, I was tired this morning. Uh, <laughs> I was, because uh, obviously, you know, I really wanted to win. I wanted to you know, get to the next round and set up that match up and um, play these 11 early, you know, 7 o'clock wake up. Everything's quick after that. Um, the time you know it, you got to get here, play, warm, I mean, warm up. And, um, so I was, I mean, I was ready. I had a little Chipotle this morning. Ordered it last night. You know, <laughs> warmed it up this morning, so I, had, I was kind of in my American feel. So that that kind of helped. After I ate that, I felt better. But I was happy um, we got pushed back a little bit. So yeah, with like, he got a bit of a laugh out of him because yeah, I mean, I say not just him, like the other journalists too, because he he mentioned Chipotle, which I don't actually know. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know what that is. Like I know I know it's American. But yeah. I, I, I actually do not know what Chipotle is. It's like it's like the um oh. What is our closest one? You see that? Oh, is it like a wrap? Oh. Is, is that is that that is that that burrito place? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. So having that know? having that for breakfast, it's kind like, of mad still. I'm not gonna lie you to you. You had it from the night before. Yeah, it's so. kind of mad still. But like I said to you um, before, 
I remember um, on the net on the Netflix breakpoint, his girl did mention um, that yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, like that yeah. is his food. If I was in, in there, I'll have asked him, "Is it better than the U- U.S. one or not?" I'm wondering if it is, because the yeah, just 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 to see where his head is at. Because if you like it that much and you're still eating in the U.K., that's crazy, bro. <laughs> There's a lot of food here, you know. No, because he did mention like yeah, kind of bringing like the U.S. or home to, to London. Like, right. so, yeah. yeah, it's like a familiar, familiarity thing, I guess. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, that was an interesting answer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I just love the fact that he's looking forward to, yeah, again, playing Carlos Alcaraz, who's, the, you know, the defending champion. Yep. And he said it, the, it's the popcorn match of, of the third round. For sure, for sure. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Same, same. Like, really, really looking forward, because I feel like Francis is, like, kind of back, or getting back to, like, where he was. mm um, so yeah that should be a good one and we look forward to seeing that on Friday uh, another win now for Jasmine Paolini yeah who handled business against Greek Minin mm-hmm. uh, seven six six two, and uh, the, yeah that was on number one court originally scheduled for number two yeah for sure so under the roof mm-hmm. you were there for most of it yeah I, I, yeah I was there basically yeah, From, yeah. literally I was there basically the whole, the whole time I think I only m- I didn't even really miss it. It, it, That's how crazy. (laughs) This this is just to describe to you how intense their match was, right? (laughs) So I was in the match and I was kept on refreshing the page to see when Osaka's press conference is going to be on. Yeah, yeah, because Osaka just finished. Literally, her press conference was like three minutes after they just put up. And I was watching the Paolini match and I think they were like at 2-1 or something like that, right? So I literally ran, went to the conference by the time I came back, they were still in the next service game. I was just like, wait, what? I thought you guys would be like way ahead. But yeah, literally that first set was just really tight. Both service games were like extremely long. Like it wasn't a thing of like, if you look at the numbers, like literally it's, it's like... Paulini did break though. She did break. She didn't know. She, yeah. she did break. Yeah. they. But that's the thing. They equally had the yeah, same yeah. like break points like, till you know she she actually eventually uh, bagged the first set the um but yeah it, it was very intense from like both um shout out to men and like she was she was hitting some great shots but they both were like yeah. there were so many so many entertaining um shots there and to be fair i was really happy because that match was doing Senna and Berrettini match, which I really <laughs> wanted to watch. If you guys listen to our Wimbledon preview, I've actually I actually literally spent time to say, wait, the non-black spin match I'm looking forward to is that. Um, but luckily, Paolini and and and, and you know Menon really gave the entertainment, so I was not mad at all. Like I was actually I was actually genuinely enjoying the match. Everyone yeah. was. Um, but yeah, the tie break was literally like the same as it was expected like to go. Like I knew it was going to go into a tie break. I generally thought actually it would go into three sets. But once we got to the second set, Pani just breezed through. Yeah. Like she took the first break. Uh, the service game was uh, like quite long again, like all the, like the other, like the first set. Um, but Pani was just applying more pressure. She was more comfortable. Um but she did, both of them did for a little while. They, Unfold's errors did increase a little bit, but Paddy just, just, she was just too good to a point where she was leading 4 0. But then Grenon like leveled up and then broke out 4 1. And then Paddy saved two break points. And then she broke back. Like literally, it was just nice. But it was just like beautiful um, uh, uh, winners back. Back, back to back, back to back from Paolini, and then she just had to serve for the match. And then, how, how good does she look on it. grass, man? Because, yeah, she, like she, she played obviously, she played quite well in Eastbourne the week before. Like, I, I'm very excited to see her on grass, honestly. Like, and I, I, I didn't expect her to pick up grass this quickly, yeah, because you know, it was it, it was hard for her for a while. Like, the fact that she, from, she went to like Eastbourne, went quite far, and then. She's at here literally all the way to her third round. For the first here. time as For well. For the first time. It was just like, you know, like amazing. But yeah, honestly, that was such a great match. Um, I did go to her press conference. Um, the only I, the only English The only journalist. English, yes. And Hard. I was happy. Which I knew, I was happy. Basically, Hard. guys, I had a one, one-on-one then. You know, <laughs> journalist math. Duh. Um, obviously, it's not because people don't want to see Paralini. It's just like, as we said, Sinem and Berrettini are on. That was basically the biggest match of the day. Um, but there but were a yeah. lot of Italian. Well, there were a few Italian. There were a few Italian. There were, there were, yeah, actually, no, there was like three in her press three. conference. Yeah, oh, okay. Like three, three okay. Italians. I think more came, but she was running late, and then they went oh, back. Okay. Um, which 
totally understandable, but I bet she's not complaining. I bet she's happy that she's able to go back home Sleep and stuff. Time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? That's the that's, <laughs> that's the Ghanaian coming that's out. That's the Ghanaian coming out. <laughs> good one, I'm good joking. one. But um, I did ask her like how she felt about like the match and stuff. Um, and this is what she um had to say. Uh, I think I was adapting uh, more with the surface because, as I said, I was a little bit surprised because the bounce was really low and the course was fast. I don't know if it's court one or just the humidity because of the roof, you know. Um, so then I was feeling better and better and I think I was a little bit also more relaxed, let's say. So um, I was able to play better, yeah, I think that's why. I've said many times yeah. before that your last year you dealt with a lot of tough draws for like instance your first round here you were playing against Petra um, two times in a row, <laughs> in a row. exactly literally yeah. when we saw the draw we were shouting we were like we can't believe it <laughs> do you feel like those tough draws throughout last year has helped you a lot with your game this year because I mean we I've, I've seen the level I've always yeah. felt like this year we'll be doing well but do you feel like those have helped um I don't know. I don't know, but you know, I think to be seeded uh, means that you you played some good matches um, during the year, and I think it helps because the first two matches you don't play top players. Of course, you can play also um, good players that are not seeded, but it's a little bit different now to step on court against Kvitova here that she won two times. I think it's. It's really tough, lefty, so I was like, no, two times in a row is impossible. But, you know, I, I remember both two matches I was enjoying, you know, also the grass. I, I said to myself, OK, I can play on the surface. It's tough, but the draw was tough. But, you know, I can play match with, against uh, Petra. And, yeah, I don't know. This year I came in a different position. And, yeah, I felt good in Eastbourne and... I, I guess I'm feeling good here, but you know, every match is different. So let's keep the focus on. <laughs> yeah, so it carried on as as you just heard. I also then asked her, you know, how if she felt like the uh, the tough draws from last year has helped her with her game and everything. But yeah, it's nice. It's just nice to see Paulini. I, I did doing like well. her answer though as well because yeah, she she just said how being seeded it, it does it makes a difference, mm -hmm. and obviously obviously it will because you're not going to be facing like the top players so early on. Yeah. So now she is one of the top players that yeah. people don't want to be facing. For sure. So it's a nice, it's a nice like switch up position for her to be in. For sure, for sure. Um, and, it, and it's well deserved as we've been saying like exactly. throughout this whole season. Exactly. So yeah, she's got Bianca and Drescu next. I did want to ask her about that, but time, yeah. you know, it was getting late and stuff. That's a potential popcorn as well. No, it, not potential, it is. Mm. Hence why I wanted to ask her, like how does she feel? But I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, and Drescu has been doing really well as well. Um, which, like, I, like, as I said on the pod last time, like, is very she, exciting. She's reached the grass court final. Yeah, she reached the grass court final or semi final? It was a final, yeah. She lost in the final to uh, Sam Sonova. Oh, okay. I thought it was in the semi final. Yeah, yeah, in oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, it's Lebanon going Open. to be, you know, both big hitters, you know, both been moving well. Both, what I like as well is like, this is both their first time making such a big progress. On grass, on grass okay. so yeah. I feel like is is it's just perfect. Because well, uh, yeah, but the, the post we posted to, to kind of um, celebrate the win mentioned how basically Paulini's continuing the trend of having like career first. I say career firsts, but like yeah, this year in the Grand Slams, she's reached the fourth round in Australia, which is which was a first for her. Mm. Obviously, Roland Garros runner up. Runner up. And then now Wimbledon third round. She's never she's never won a match at Wimbledon. Crazy. So like she just continues to have those like monumental moments at the yeah. Slam. So like God knows what she's gonna do here. Yeah. And then the US Open. Yeah. Um, it's it's so nice to see, man. It really Honestly, is. it's so nice to see because really, like really we said is. last year, she was grinding. I think that's what I think that's what makes me excited yeah. is that you know you actually saw her put in like the hard work and she even said it herself so many times from press conferences yeah, to like yeah. you know on court interviews where she's like you know i've been working hard but most importantly i believe in myself more as well so i think she just entered this year different it's energy yeah. and you can just see it and what i like as well you can see that she's enjoying the moment so she's playing well she's improving she's winning these matches getting these rankings getting these titles all while 
taking in the moment and smiling and smiling Everyone loves that smile yeah that honestly smile. She's, she's just she's just great vibes man so good luck to her we're definitely gonna be there we we, 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 we got some good matches <laughs> coming rounds, up but that, that friday yeah it's gonna be nice still we're eating <laughs> i told you guys put your phone on do not disturb cancel <laughs> your dates don't do anything you need to come and watch some tennis that is what you need to do i hope the weather, I hope the weather behaves as well it better be boy but, yeah um <laughs> Let's get into another match. So, Gelman Feast, mm -hmm. he's currently doing his thing. I say currently, his, that match has now been suspended. Yep. Um, so, he's playing Stanislas, I'm going to try, <laughs> Warinka. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he's up two sets to love, and it's 5 all in the fifth. No, sorry, in the third, third my bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, that, that's that been halted now because of bad light. So, they'll continue that tomorrow. I say tomorrow on day four. Mm -hmm. Um. And I want to say that would be second on court two. Um, but yeah, Monfils is looking good. Won, yeah. won, won the first set in the tie break, mm -hmm. took the second, 6 4. But then Lucy, this is the thing, like, we're going to come on to him later on. Felix Ojeda Aliasim found himself in a very similar situation um, against Tanasi Kokanakis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about what happened there. But yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm expecting. Monfils to pull through. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully he does it in straights and just, yeah, can kind of recover in time to be ready for his third round because he'll, he'll have to play back-to-back -back days mm. due to the match getting carried over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's talk about some defeats now, unfortunately. Christopher Eubanks, yeah. quarter-finalist last year, he fell to French qualifier Contan Ellis yeah. um, in straight sets. Yeah. Oh man, this match was meant to be played on day two. Day two, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was one of the first to get cancelled and got moved to yeah day three. Yeah, that match was pretty. It was it was it was tough because mm. first of all, content was like in a diff different ball game. Like he was he was on smoke. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, qualify as well. Like so, he's got those three matches coming yeah. in. Yeah, he was on smoke. And meanwhile, with you bags, I think it was just a bad day in the office. Like everything he was trying was just not working like mm. it, it's, it was weird like he was hitting some shots and you could be you would literally watch it like yeah this is definitely gonna go but it just it, it wasn't like yeah. it was just yeah it was just one of them one of them days um but uh, i don't know i, I feel like I, when i saw him he didn't look too down yeah. even when we saw him on the grounds before his match started like he was still like you know Monday, in a good yeah, mood yeah, and yeah. everything really and like, whatnot. Yeah, vibrant. Yeah. So yeah, I hope he keeps that up. I I, th I think it's gonna free him up, you know, like because yeah, the, ob obviously there's like pressure coming in mm -hmm. um, to like the slam where you've had your like career best result to date. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like yeah, now being out first round, like there's no kind of expectation on him anymore. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I I do feel like it will free him up for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's let's see how he how he gets on. But he yeah. he is playing doubles, so he he will get his doubles campaign underway um, with his compatriot Evan King, um, and that will be against the Brits Liam Brody and Billy, Billy Harris, mm. and, and that will be on day four. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good luck, good luck to them in in doubles. Yeah, Sloane Stevens, uh, another victim on day three. Unfortunately, um, she fell to the talented Russian Diana Schneider. In straights, one on one. Yeah, that's going to be tough either way, boy. Obviously, Schneider's coming off the back of winning Bad Homburg, so mm -hmm. she's well in form. Yep. Um, I, I didn't see much of the match. I'm not going to lie because I was watching. I was watching Felix. There was that, and it was all. They match stopped. I think twice as well. Or something yeah, there, like there, there was rain, there there was rain, rain delays, stoppages. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. The rain delays kind of kind of made it hard for us to watch some of the matches. Yeah. I, I I had it on. I don't know what match I was watching, but I had it on in my computer while I was watching another match. Okay. Um, Could you but yeah, tell anything from it? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. It was it was it's quite difficult. But all I know is that when I was looking at the stats, I was watching the match. It was like just, it was just Diana just doing doing everything. Yeah, to be yeah. honest, um, I think Sloane was just. But you, you, Sloane was trying to just trying to fight it off. She even took off like her long sleeve after and was just like after the first set, it was like, no, 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 let me just do I'm trying it. Trying to fight. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Schneider was just kept she broke her, you know, like it was it it, it was it, it was pretty tough. But again, the second I knew she was facing her for the second round, I was like, Yeah, this is gonna be tough. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but you know, at least she 
she got it through. She did. She got through that for that first round. She played well. She played more grass tournaments this year than she normally does. Um, I want to say she plays doubles as well. Um, but I'm not sure who she's playing with. Who's Sloane? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure she's playing. Yeah, doubles. you're right. Actually, you're actually right. She is playing with Kruger. Okay. Ashleen Kruger. Yeah, who, uh, who, they won a title earlier this year. Yeah. Charleston. Oh, yeah, yeah it's true, that yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, but if their match is not till Friday, so she has cool. some couple of days off. So she'll so still, yeah. be, still be around. Still be around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say fair play to Schneider, man. Like, yeah, because that, that's, that a That's a pretty comprehensive win. Mm -hmm. um, and Sloan, like, yeah, obviously she's going to be disappointed, but mm -hmm. at least she has, like, the doubles to kind of fall back on, I guess. So, yeah, good luck to her in that. Mm -hmm. um, should we go Naomi Osaka? Yeah. Fell to the impressive Emma Navarro in straights. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't that surprised, Lucy, I'm not going to lie. Because Navarro, really? Navarro is a good player, man. She's the 19th seed. She's had a good season this year as well. Fairs. Um And yeah, like, we, like we've been saying for like forever, like this is Osaka's comeback. Mm -hmm. Like she's making a comeback, you know, back to like pro life. Um, or pro tour life anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's like, <laughs> she played well in that first set. So she lost it 6-4. Yeah. Um, and like kind of fell away in the second, losing it 6-1. But Yeah, that. so I, I was there throughout. Yeah, well, what did um, you make of it? Well, first of all, a, light, a bit like um, Coco, like her, well, with, with Osaka's case, her, her second serve were way better than her first. Um, but Navarro was just hitting like great winners and stuff. Yeah, because I, I said that Navarro basically dominated on all, all departments. She, no, she like, did. Like, yeah. she like, and it's funny because on the first set, eventually like one time what Osaka was actually improving her, her first serves. But by the time she did that, Navarro was just playing better. And not only she was playing better, she was just very comfortable. Like she didn't look nervous. Yeah. Like she was just comfortable on the surface. She was returning really well. Like she looked like she belonged there, like type of thing. She was just dominating. Um, but then the, the second set, I think, you know, it just got too much for Osaka and it was just errors after errors. But then at one point, funny enough, at like 4-1, one little moment, Osaka was just playing like really well. She was hitting some, you know, some really good points in and the, it wasn't even on her service. Second. The second set. Okay. And it wasn't even the service. It, was, it even like it hit like some good points and even went to do. So she could have actually broken oh, her yeah, there. Yeah. But like she, she, like she did it eventually. But... Yeah, Navarro was just like um, leading and stuff. And to be fair, apparently, like I'm seeing here, like during her press conference, you know, like they did ask her, like, how did she prepare herself for like the experience and playing someone like Osaka, who is a, you know, um, who has won four majors and stuff. And, you know, she was like, yeah, she had her game plan and how she wanted to take it like mentally. Um, but she did say, like, you know, she, she feels like it's been taking years for, like, preparation for these type of matches. But in terms of, like, um, Osaka herself, she said that she wanted to play aggressively and push back against her, especially on her serve, and, like, make her think a little and feel uncomfortable on her serve. And she was like, that was a big thing. Which she did, definitely. And she did that. Yeah. Like, she did that. So her game plan really worked. Speaking of pressers, I wanted to give a shout out to you as well because you kept it positive in the Sarkis Thank you. presser. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Which we did tweet about. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I think it's important. Like, perspective is always important. And, like, it's always difficult difficult talking to a player, like, after a defeat. After a defeat, yeah, um, for sure. But it's, it was nice how you said, yeah, like, let's talk about, like, your proudest moments of this grass court season. Because yeah. she has had a good grass court she season. She did. She did. Um, so, yeah, I think Asaka, she's trending in the right direction, back inside the top 100 as well. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. we're going to be seeing a lot more of Asaka this yeah. year. We look forward to that. And for those who didn't see the post, I basically asked her, um, um, I asked her, um, what was that, her proudest moment and everything? And she basically said, like, during the grass season, and, you know, because I also meant, I said, I also mentioned her top 100 because she posted that and stuff. Yeah. And she said, um, for her, it was the fact that she played a lot more like grass yeah. tournaments, although she didn't do all of them. Like, for example, she was meant to do Eastbourne. Um, she's still like proud of that. The commitment she showed. The commitment, basically. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what she was proud of. Mm. I, if I didn't have to run down, I would have asked more questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of breath. But my, my, my mind literally went like oh. kind of like blank. I did want to ask her um, if she, if the top 100 
um, ranking was on her mind a lot. It was a way to motivate her. Like th that was literally one of my questions I was going to ask. But I, guys, I had like one minute to like <laughs> run down from number one court to there. Like literally even at one point, she kind of even laughed a little bit at me because I was like, sorry, I'm out of breath while I was asking the question. Um, but yeah, but shout out to Osaka. I hope she like really proud of herself. She was, she was really down um, with the result. It's and you know, it is what it is. Like, she's a fighter. I think once she can tackle that mental block, um, she, she, she'll she be gay gazing through, um, yeah. to be honest. Um, but well done to her, you know. Grass, Grassaka is over. <laughs> uh, for now, we're for going 20, back for to Cleomi for a little bit. But, you know, looking forward to her. Cleomi? Yeah, Olympics. You're forgetting oh, about that. Damn, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I know. I know yeah, we're tennis yeah, fans yeah. and we forget about Olympics sometimes. But Olympics, but... <laughs> it's like, huh? but, no, of course, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but shout out to her, shout out to her team, and shout out to Navarro, like for you know for for yeah, doing her done, thing. She's having a good year, like you said. So yeah, and she's gonna play against uh, Schneider, so it's actually going to be two. If from what I've seen from both, yeah, it's gonna be a good so match. Sh Sh Schneider actually beat her. In Bad Hamburg, really? Yeah, I think the semi-finals. Oh, oh, so that's so, gonna, yeah. It's a rematch, and that was a free setter. Oh, really? so, yeah, Yo, can we get to be, Friday, please? It's what, be another one, Friday, what eating, man? <laughs> Friday, what eating? What eating? Good. Felix OJ Aliasim, who we kind of mentioned briefly um, mm. before, so he ended up losing to Tanasi Kokanakis. Mm. Obviously, that match again was suspended from the day before due to bad light. Um. And yeah, it was it's tough, Lucy, because he had moments to to close out that match mm -hmm. on the day it started, but was unable to. So that's a tough defeat for yeah. for Felix. Um, I'm gonna say the uh, stoppage did upset the momentum because yeah, he he'd, he'd won the two opening sets. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he had match points in the third set, but was unable to to convert, and then. Yep. Yeah, the fourth was one all, and then yeah, Kokonakis to his credit, he came back and basically won won those two next sets to to win the match. Mm -hmm. um, Felix didn't do press afterwards as well, which I'm annoyed we didn't request. So we that, that's that's yeah, to be fair, yeah. We <laughs> I I didn't request, um, so I'm gonna hold my hands up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, again, I'm I'm looking at the positives. Like Felix is back inside the top twenty. I'm not sure. To be fair, he'll probably fall out after Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. But coming into Wimbledon anyway, like his game is trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, like, yeah, there, there's there were signs anyway that he was doing the right things, and mm -hmm. then hopefully he can pick up um, from like where he left off prior to Wimbledon, and he will be at the Olympics too with with Canada. So. He should he should have a, a good Olympics. Um or well, hopefully he has a good Olympics with, with Canada Canada. I wanna say this would be his second uh, Olympics too. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm I'm kind of expecting more from him come the US like summer swing. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll we'll see where where he's at. Yeah. Um but then if you have anything to add. I mean he normally does better towards the end of the year anyway, so yeah, but yeah, we'll see we'll see how he goes. Shout out to him. Yeah. So yeah, let's look at tomorrow now, Lucy. So day four is order of play. We've got Fis Ubert Hergach, the yep. seventh seed. Mm hmm That's gonna be interesting. Montgomery on the Jabor, the tenth seed. Looking forward to that. Yep. Uh Keys. To be fair, that got moved. So yep. that was meant to be played today, but that's been been moved to day four mm -hmm. uh, against Ye Fan Wang. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Shelton too, that also got moved. Yep. Um, so he's got Lloyd Harris. Uh, and we've got Coco Goff and Jessica Baruda starting their doubles campaign. Mm -hmm. And they're the 11th seed, so look out for them. Um, also, Jay Clark, he's not in, he's not in the uh, rundown, but Jay Clark and Jack Willis, they're also playing doubles. Mm. Yeah, there's quite a few doubles tomorrow. Yeah, a lot, a lot of doubles Basically, the doubles matches. campaign starting tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, out, look out for the doubles um, tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, we'll be keeping an eye on all that as well. Oh, I forgot to mention this last time. Go on. Thank God I'm, I remember it now because you were upset with me for forgetting this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so guys, when we were now before um, Shelton's um, <laughs> well, we, press conference we, last you. time. Um, okay, me. <laughs> oh, now, now you're doing the we. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was it was nice. It just I think that, that was my was that my first time meeting Shelton. I in think person? it was. Yeah. 
Because it was me that they did in last year. Last year, the yeah. conference, yeah. So we were walking in and then Sharon was like, hey, congratulations on your awards. And thank you. The Tennis Blacklist Awards. Tennis Blacklist Awards. Shel- as Shel- as you guys, you guys may, may know. If you guys don't know, this is an award-winning podcast. <laughs> you are listening to an award-winning podcast. This is not like some some small podcast that you're just fine. Oh, just there yeah. in the corner, innit? Like, this this is serious. No, but honestly, on the level, that, that, that's amazing from Shelton, man. Honestly, yeah. Shout out to Shelton. Like, it, it, it was, the, I, it really took me by surprise. Yeah, that, that, I was just like, me. oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share that that nice moment. I forgot to share it last time, <laughs> like, on day two. I'm glad so, you got that guys. out, Lucy. Well done. Yeah, no, are you happy? <laughs> because, you guys, Eugene even wanted to, he looked at me as like, can we can we go back and film? I was like, boy, plug up the mics again. Quickly. I want to go home and sleep. Okay, we're not doing that. Uh, but yeah, but that is day three for you guys. Looking forward to day four. Um, we hope that you guys enjoyed the as much as we did. Um, and yeah, like as usual, make sure that you stay tuned on socials, posting there on daily. Um, thank you guys also for your feedback and comments. It's been really positive. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. honestly, guys, that's that's is. is it really motivates us. So, yeah, we really appreciate it. We're glad that you guys are enjoying this, um, especially that we are going to bed at 2, 3 a.m. Yes, <laughs> and waking up at 7, 8 to be on ground on time. So hearing these comments, um, it means a lot because then it's like, okay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Mm. The things that we're doing is worth it. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and we'll have you back tomorrow for day four at Wimbledon. Thanks for tapping in, guys.